hello everybody welcome to my channel and this is going to be several lessons on fluid acrylic painting so i'm going to call it fluid acrylic painting and this is lesson one so the first thing you need to know is how to mix your paints i have mixed these colors the colors that i'm using by the way are a lime green that doesn't exist anymore but that's fine you can make your own lime green or just buy a liquitex basics version this is a um, deep violet a neon blue and bright aqua green and i don't know if you can see but i i with sharpie go on each tube of paint that i have and mark out, so this is a translucent paint, that's a tea, this is opaque, this one's opaque, and this one's semi-translucent. And the reason that matters when you're doing pouring is when you're mixing the paint, like you'll watch a lot of videos and people will say, I use one part paint to one part Floetrol and then some water. That doesn't work. I mean, it, it does work if you're using the same density of paints like opaque is much thicker if you can see i haven't mixed any water in here yet but that is much thicker than say this translucent cerulean um the neon blue almost is not going to need any water so you have to bear that in mind you can approximate but Really, ideally what you want is all your paints to have exactly the same consistency. I am going to um, add some water and the thickness, what you want to look for is that the thickness of the paint, when you lift it up, when you lift up your popsicle stick or whatever you're stirring it with, that it doesn't leave a mound. So this one, that's leaving patterns on top of the paint. That's too thick. So I add a little bit more water at a time. And to be very honest, and Frank, I think using distilled water in your acrylic paints is better. But if you're just having some fun and learning how to do some fluid acrylic painting, then just use water straight out of the tap. That is almost right. Add a little bit more water and add a little bit at a time. So I'm going to show you in this series of um, fluid acrylic lessons, I'm going to demonstrate different types of painting. So for this lesson, I'm going to do a dirty pour. I'm going to do a dirty flip cup and I'm going to do a dirty flip and drag through an open cup or vessel. I'm using a pipe actually. So that's still a little thick. I'm going to do this one till I get the consistency that I want and then you can see how all of them should be. Then I will cut once I've mixed the rest and, and come back and get on with the first painting. So this is much better. Right, perfect. So as you can see, this flows off the stick in one consistent line. And it's almost like when the line is running, it's, it's the popsicle stick is one with the paint. It's not like water would just drip off. So the consistency my visual for the consistency is that of um, heavy cream. That's what I would say this is. So I'm going to mix the rest and then come back. And this is Floetrol. 
So I approximately use one part paint to two parts Floetrol, and then I add water to get the consistency that I want. So what I've done is I have um, put push, push pins in the back of each canvas and you may want to mask the back to keep the underside nice and clean. If you want to measure your paints precisely, you could grab yourself one of these um, uh, scales, which actually I use more for resin than, than paint. I kind of tend to just eyeball the paint, but these are great. The other thing you will need is, put that down, um, cover your work surface in some plastic. I have thick plastic and then I have this. So when I'm finished, I just remove my paintings when they're dry and just roll this up and, and throw it away. The other thing which is essential is some kind of heat tool, like um, a, this is a chef's torch and you'll need that to pop the air bubbles. You may want to do a flood coat first, which um, everyone has slightly different techniques. The technique I like, if I'm planning on covering the whole canvas, I'll just put a little bit of white paint around the edge because it helps the paint flow better. And if I'm doing negative space, and I think two of the canvases I, I'm doing today are going to be negative space, then you will want to maybe put an entire flood coat down of white paint. And, excuse me, the other thing that is important is that your canvas is level. Because otherwise, if it's not level, all the paint as it's drying is just gonna like flow away. All the demonstrations that I'm going to be doing in these fluid acrylic lessons, fluid acrylics 101, I'm going to be using exactly the same paint colors so that everything is comparable. Another point which is important is that how much paint do you use for each canvas? I, below this video and below every video that I do on this topic, I'm going to leave you an approximation of how much paint you should use. These are 12 inch by 12 inch canvases. They're only a half inch deep because this is just for tutorial purposes. And so on a canvas like this, um, I would use um, approximately eight, seven to eight fluid ounces. But I'm below, as I say, below you will see a much better guide. Now let's begin with, we're going to just do a dirty pour. What a dirty pour means is that you put all the paints in together in the one cup. And if you remember, I had um, marked on my paint tubes, which was opaque, which was translucent, which was semi-opaque. The more opaque colors will sink to the bottom. So what you have to remember is whatever paint you're gonna put in first, it is going to come out last. I am going to just white paint. None of my paints have silicone in them. This is just the first lesson, so I will get to that in another video. All right. Not too worried about covering it perfectly because the paint is gonna flow over, flow over this one. I'm gonna pop those bubbles quickly because really don't want bubbles on top of bubbles. Save the bubbles for my bath. 
And the other thing on the, on the calculator, the um, it's on the calculator, the, the table that I have below this, the amount of paint depends if, do, if you want to cover the sides, how deep your canvas is. So it's just a rough guideline. So I am going to begin with my turquoise. And then my blue. Here's another tip, which I'm gonna show you. If you pour straight on, the paint just sinks. If you pour down the side, the paint will sit on the top. That's just another tip. Um, let's do the lime green. And then the deep violet. Okay, so they're my four colors and you can use many colors as you want. In my next lesson, I will be giving some tips on color choices. So with a dirty pour, I've got my colors all in the same cup and you literally pour the paint out onto the canvas and you can you can begin wherever you want you can tilt it i'm going to tilt it and just pour like this and here comes here come the blues so that is a dirty pour Now, when you tilt the canvas, you can tell if all your paints were, you know, the same consistency because the colors will tend to move at the same, same rate. So I'm just going to leave, I'm going to pull this back. There, I'm not, I don't want it to zigzag. All right, let me wipe my hands and get my torch. And pop the air bubbles. And you will get some cells, even if you haven't put silicone in them, because um, the different paints just react against each other and as you're popping the bubbles, the thinner paints that are underneath are going to try to come to the top. See the neon blue is coming up and that was the thinnest paint I used. Side. I'm not going to use the same cup. I don't want contamination. So move that away and get my next canvas. So this one, let's move that a little bit. Love these colors. This one is going to be the dirty flip cup. So it's the same principle. You get your paints. And <clears throat> I'm going to pour them in the same order. That. And then the blue. And then the purple. Oh, I hope this is the same order. I can't remember now. I think yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Anyway, if it's not, I apologize. Now, because I'm going to really cover the entire canvas on this one, I'm going to need more paint. 
So I might just add more color. I could even add a little bit of white in. Lovely. So as I say, on this one, I just do some of this paint. I'm just going to put paint around the edges just because it's, it helps the flow. Because so I'm going planning on covering the entire canvas. All right, dirty flip cup. So you get your canvas, I get my paint, put my canvas on top of my paint, and then I flip. And it's a good idea to just leave it like, you know, a few seconds, let the paint drop and start reacting with each other in the cup. And there's several ways to do this. You can either just pick it up, you could slide it forward and drag it back. And some people call that a push and pull. I am just going to pick it up because I want you to see what a dirty flip cup is. And it's a good idea when you do pick it up, move it away from the canvas so you don't get drips. this on the sides so now before I move this around I'm going to pop some air bubbles and you see how much more little cells are developing I mean these are tiny cells you'll see when you do um, add silicone oil, you get much bigger, much bigger cells. But this is like lots and lots of lacing, and again, it's that neon blue popping up. All right. So now we're going to move this slowly around. And try to catch in the corners. And you'll see, because it's got paint on already, it helps it quite considerably. Okay, just make sure all those edges are covered. And I'm gonna torch it one more time. Lots, lots of little tiny cells are popping up, right? even some bigger ones too. All right, so there you have your dirty flip cup. I'm going to move that aside and now we're going to do an open dirty pour. I want the whole canvas flooded in white. To be honest, this is also my, this is my favorite kind of fluid acrylic. And there are all kinds of different techniques and, um, you know, I have quite a few things planned as it gets more advanced. So this is literally just the basics. I'm actually just gonna use my hair dryer. The paint. That's a good little tip for um, quickly making sure it's even. Pop those bubbles, lots of them. All right, make sure 
edges are covered because this is not a lot of the paint is going to be flowing over the edges. Okay, so with this, I have I have a piece of plumbing pipe from the hardware store. I've just put a black mark around one side because that's the rough edge. And I'm gonna place this on here. So this time it's different. What goes in last will come out last, whereas the flip cup what goes in first comes out last. So let's do this. And this is a lot less paint. Bit of turquoise, bit of blue, some deep violet, and some bright green. So that's all I'm going to do for this one. Just going to put a little bit of white around this edge. Okay. So with this, you very gradually lift it and push it around the canvas and slowly the paint will come out. So pretty. And get my torch again. I hope this is. And this you just can move around to whatever desire you have till you get the shape that you like. So that is a and, and you can you can change it too, like I think this is too solid. So I'm just gonna put some white in there. And move this. Create slightly more interesting shapes. Okay, so I'm gonna to torch that one more time. And then I will bring you down and we will take a look at all three. Okay, so here we have the first one. This was a dirty paw. Well, this one was the dirty flip cup. And it looks really quite galactical. And then this was the open dirty cup, which is lovely. That's my fave. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful for those of advanced pourers. You probably flipped through it, but there are lots of people wanting to learn this really fun technique of painting. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.